Welcome to a Brooklyn Baptist Health Exclusive. My name is Brian Pavlik. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey of 100 years, a century of caring for Brooklyn and for Princeton Baptist Medical Center right there in Birmingham. And I am honored to have with me today the CEO of the hospital, Mr. Mike Neuendorf. Mike, how are you doing today, my friend? Hey, good, Brian. Glad to be here. Oh, man, it's so cool. Hey, somebody had to be the CEO when the 100th anniversary came out. And here you are sitting in the hot chair in the office. And we're going to talk a little bit about the celebration that's been going on already this year. And as we keep going into 2022, but you need to know the man himself, the guy who's kind of leading this next just tenure here of Princeton's incredible history. Mike's been off to a great start already in his young career with us, but he's going to tell you a little bit more about him and then just his experiences now as he's been day to day in operations there at Princeton. But Mike, if you don't mind, just briefly, just introduce yourself, your title a little bit about how long you've been at Princeton, and then we'll get into some of the hard questions. Sure. I'm, I'm Mike Neuendorf. I've been here coming up on four years, uh, been in healthcare for uh, 20, 25 years, have a uh, undergraduate degree in industrial engineering. And a lot of people say, how in the world did you make that transition? Uh, you know, it's, it's actually a, a pretty reasonable transition as you look at it from a process improvement standpoint. You know, we're a lot of businesses operating within and under one roof. And so from the aspect of managing processes and trying to improve outcomes and, and getting, you know, this process to work with that process so it's streamlined from one end to the other, it's really a nice fit from industrial engineering. Um, I did a couple of uh, different assignments outside of healthcare with Delta Airlines, uh, with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, all IT related and said, you know, I, I like people a whole lot more than sitting in a, a cubicle looking at, um, you know, reports and, and data. And so I went back and got a master's in health administration and I worked for a number of different systems. Um, here in, in central part of Alabama and, and down on the coast and in Mississippi for nine years. And so been here for uh, the, the time was right to make the next step. I, I found this opening and of course the, the rich tradition with, with um, Baptist Health System and, and Brookwood Baptist Health. Uh, we were just thrilled to be here. I, I was fortunate enough a year into my assignment here with Princeton to also pick up oversight uh, for Walker Baptist and Jasper. And, and that's just been a wonderful um, addition for me and, and to get, get to meet the team and the medical staff there and just a fabulous community. No, but Mike, as you can see with his, his personality and his wit, his humor and just his charm, I mean, what a good example. And like he says, um, he, the, I don't get to see his office very often because he's not there. He's, he's out and about. He's meeting with doctors. He's meeting with patients. He's meeting with his nurses. He's a leader by example. And that is one of the reasons why we are so happy to have him in particular here at Princeton. Now, Mike, that's the enough of talking about you because we're here to talk about the overall entity of Princeton, but you are a big part of that. And I wanted to get your insights on, you talked about how you were able to pick up the assignment here at Princeton. What were just kind of your first initial impressions when either you were looking at moving here or what was just something about Princeton that drew you to it that said, Man, this, this isn't just a fun place to work or a great place to work. This is a great place to make an impact or for me to fit in with my God-given talents and all that. Just briefly to explain your first kind of interactions and thoughts, those first couple of times you were touring and learning about Princeton. Yeah, I knew of, of Baptist Health Systems here in and around the Birmingham market from uh, previous assignments here 15 or so years ago. Um, so, I, so I had that foundational knowledge. Um, when I came here, though, interviewing, um, it, it kind of struck me quickly as to the, the culture and the family-like environment when you walk the halls. Um, everyone kind of strives to have that uh, in their business, in their industry, whatever it may be. Um, and I've seen pieces of it in different hospitals that I've worked in. I've been fortunate to work in some great places. The minute you walk in here, you see eye contact, you see smiles, uh, you, you get you know, asked the question, can I help you? What more can I do for you? All the things that you hope your staff approaches patients and visitors and our, our internal customers, one another with. Um, I saw that quickly when I came in. Um, you know, also noticed a staff that was loyal and tenured that wanted to be here, that felt like it was more than just a paycheck. That's important to us, to, to feel like you have a calling here, you're impacting people's lives, you're impacting a community, the west side of Birmingham, uh, you're drawing referrals because of the high acuity services from outside of this service area. All those pieces were of interest to me and made it exciting. 
You mentioned all those career changes you had before. One, that's just an inspiration all because I'm with you. I started in newspaper sales and then I went into, you know, just kind of operations. And I'm with you as far as that change. But regardless of what industry you're in, you've probably seen some similar dynamics as far as what makes a business or a company successful. For Princeton, obviously, 100 years of adaptation and constantly changing, uh, it has to happen or else you don't get here in 100 years. But what is one thing that you've seen in your four years, whether it's a constant vision or a value? value that Princeton has that has remained steady, even with all the changes, COVID and, the, you know, these different procedures, different things coming in, new buildings, new people. What's just one thing that you have seen stay consistent for four years that you know has always been a foundation there at Princeton? You know, the, the mission comes to mind. Um, and I think the other overriding factor is that the patient always comes first. Yeah. And so, you know, whether it's a specific service line or, or some new piece of capital we're looking at um, or a, an incident on any given day, what it boils down to is what's the right thing to do here? Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the patients and their families needing right now? We can figure out all the noise around it later, but let's focus on ensuring the patient has what they need. That's cool. Talking to CEO Mike Nundorf of Princeton as we celebrate a century of caring there in Birmingham. Mike, I, I'm fortunate when I get to see you a lot of times, it's either out in the public, whether it's at fundraising events for the Baptist Health Foundation or some specific things going on for our hospitals. And that is the big part of what has made Princeton so successful is its relationship with the surrounding communities. Can you touch on that just briefly about the impact that either you think the hospital has on the community or more importantly, I know for you, the community has on blessing the the hospital um, being there right there in West Jefferson and the Birmingham metro area we have so many different walks of life backgrounds people demographics that come through our doors there it's such a wonderful facility just briefly explain or describe that relationship that we have with those communities yeah I think I think part of that relationship also comes in from Baptist Health Systems and mm -hmm. the foundation yep. uh, they're certainly interested in bringing many of the aspects together to ensure that uh, those people in all walks of life are getting the care that they need, mm -hmm. uh, be it for a, a screening mammogram uh, that maybe they otherwise couldn't afford or, or didn't have transportation to receive. Uh, and they're helping us tie some of those efforts together. Yeah, being here on the west side of Birmingham is important. As part of this uh, centennial celebration, we've had some community events where staff has the opportunity to get out and work on small projects uh, in area neighborhoods or get out and do some health walks. And so um, you generally see this air of appreciation for people in the communities when you're out and about, um, you know, they recognize that you're here for them. And, and that's a prideful feeling that's very hard to attain or, or one you don't understand until you feel it. You feel the warmth and the smile from someone in the community knowing that you're here, you're coming into work each and every day, each and every day to take care of them, their neighbors and their family. And that's a great place to be. No, that's awesome. And, and, you know, the vibe and the, just the positive energy that I've had just doing a few of these uh, interviews already and seeing some of the different reports and attending some of the different festivities that are going on, it, it really is a, a culmination of 100 years. And, you know, now we look forward to the next 100. And as we kind of grow and as we learn and as just the adaptations that come from being in the medical world happen, uh, in a hundred years, it's going to look completely different. We, we assume, right? So if Mike Neuendorf today in 2022 could say to the CEO of Princeton Baptist Medical Center in 2032, or, you know, or excuse me, or in, in 2122, or could give a speech to, you know, people down the road and you say, folks, a hundred years from now, what is one piece of advice you would give those employees, that CEO, that will serve our communities and keep us going for another 100 years? What would be just that one piece of advice you would give? You know, I would say it's, you, you kind of just said it, I guess I'll wrap it up in a little different terms, and it's, it's be a part of something different, continue to serve. And, you know, all that culminates into continuing the mission, being right here where we are, um, not losing focus, understanding that it's about something bigger. You know, you mentioned some of the videos you've done. And, and as I watch uh, some of the, the early drafts of those videos and hear some of the long tenured employees talking, I mean, it, it's hard to hear some of those stories without shedding a tear. And, you know, while I don't have that track record and multiple family members that worked here, many, many do. And you understand not just the calling, but the investment, the time and energy 
not that one individual's made, but generations and families, you know, uh, fathers and sons, grandfathers, mothers, brothers, sisters that have all worked here, uh, you know, born here, had their child here, and they've, you know, really invested their lives in Princeton. That says a lot about the team and the culture that's here. Uh, as I watched some of those interviews, I, I quickly said, where do I sign up? I'm ready to sign up again. And, um, you know, really strong message behind that. I would, I would say, understand that you're about something different and keep serving. Something bigger, helping the least of these. I mean, that's all about what Princeton Baptist Medical Center has been about for 100 years, folks. And this is one of the biggest reasons why it's going to continue for another 100 years. And that's Mike Newendorf, our CEO. Mike, I appreciate it. I know you're busy, man. I appreciate your leadership. I appreciate everything that you've done in your four years here as you look forward to the next few years here of your tenure. We just appreciate your leadership. We appreciate all of our employees, nurses, doctors, staff, vendors, everybody who comes through those doors, Princeton Baptist Medical Center, especially to our guests our patients, the families, everybody that's associated. You've made this such a wonderful celebration already, and it's just April, folks. We're just getting started. So be on the lookout for more community events. Be on the lookout for Mike out and about in public. See him. Congratulate him on behalf of everybody here. We appreciate it. Mike, I appreciate you for everybody else. Happy 100, Princeton, and we'll be seeing you guys soon. Thank you.